Hey all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrew Rowe and I'm currently a cloud engineer working and living in Boulder, Colorado. Now in my last video, you guys had a lot of really great questions in terms of, you know, what Andrew, what should my next steps be um, if I want to actually put my first foot forward into getting a job as a cloud engineer, as a cloud security engineer? And rightfully so. I mean, you guys asked some really great questions and I kind of wanted to sum up, you know, kind of base level next steps that you guys could take right now and it doesn't really involve any of the you know generic advice such as you know are you on the traditional career path are you going to be getting a bachelor's degree uh, what kind of projects are you working on so in this video i really wanted to show you guys three certifications that i think you can get within the next say one to three months that are really going to help propel you into that next step of actually actioning on becoming a cloud engineer, a cloud security engineer, or getting into cloud for the first time. So without further ado, today I'm gonna to be presenting you guys the three certifications that I think you should get right now if you wanna become a cloud practitioner or a cloud engineer or a cloud analyst. Let's hop right into the video. So there's a ton of different certifications that you can take, whether they're Azure, Google Cloud certifications, AWS. But me being mainly an AWS practitioner, I'm really gonna be focusing on the AWS Cloud and you know certifications that go along with that. So my first certification that I'm gonna to recommend to you guys to take and especially study for on this one is the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Exam. Now I know a lot of professionals will kind of gear you away from this one and say you should really just focus on the solutions architect first, but this is gonna be re really geared towards people that are just getting into the cloud for the first time, right? I got a ton of questions of Andrew, you know, I don't know anything about the cloud, where should I start? And it's really hard for me to answer these kind of questions, you know, in the YouTube comments or, you know, off the cuff. So I really think that if you study for the cloud practitioner exam, you're gonna get a really good baseline of you know, not only what the cloud is, but just working in a cloud computing environment in general. I know a lot of you guys come from, you know, on-prem or just totally non-technical backgrounds, and you're trying to hop into the cloud where it, it, it makes you kind of baseline be a little bit more technical than you would on-prem because everything is so interconnected. There's so many APIs, there's so many automations. Um, there, there's so much automation that you can leverage. So I really recommend this kind of certification. Now you're gonna get a really good glimpse, um, as I've stated in my last video and in previous videos, of how the cloud works on a baseline level. So you're gonna to get to know all the resources that you're gonna be using. You're gonna be get to know all of the, you know, logging, monitoring uh, resources, and resources and services that you're gonna be using. But you're also going to really understand the basics of cloud that are gonna help you pass the next certifications that I'm gonna be talking about. Now some resources, and I'll link them down in the description below, that I think you should be using in order to actually pass the certification. One of them being A Cloud Guru. I know I get a lot of questions in the comments, um, and thank you for those, but I get a lot of questions in the comments saying, you know, A Cloud Guru doesn't cover certain questions. Now, I know I've said this before, but I'm just gonna reiterate it again. When you're taking these certification exams, AWS is actually gonna put some questions in those exams themselves that aren't going to be graded. Now what the purpose of those is, is that AWS wants to see and gauge how difficult their test is, whether it's you know, the certification you're taking right now, or uh, how difficult a, you know, a certification later on will be, like the cloud, uh, or the architect, architect associate or developer associate. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna throw in these questions that are actually much more you know, high level, or actually whether you wanna put it this way or not, granular level than what you're used to. So you might struggle with those, but those are not actually graded. Now I'm not saying that if you don't study, things won't seem like they're actually difficult when they're not, but if you actually put in the time to, you know, study over A Cloud Guru or, you know, YouTube videos of this certification, it's really easily passable, you know. You can easily pass it within two months and I'm not trying to you know, time box people, but you can pass within two months after having no cloud experience whatsoever. And that's the beauty of the certification. It's really one to you know, get your feel for the actual tests and exams themselves and how they ask questions so you can be successful later on. But it's also you know, a confidence builder. You're just getting in the cloud for the first time. You really wanna get a ground level cert. This is definitely the cert that you're gonna to wanna to take first in order to you know, start off your confidence in the cloud and your career in the cloud. 
So definitely try out the AWS Certified Practitioner. Now the next certification you're gonna to want to check out is gonna be kind of a twofold, twofold answer. So down one path, you can go the Certified Solutions Architect and I'll kind of link something right here. Or you can go down the Certified Developer Role. Now both of these have viability in terms of career. Mia, sorry, my dog is eating her paw right now. Both of these have viability in terms of your career and, and your trajectory. But one of them is actually going to take you on the path of being a high level solutions expert and that's going to be the, the solutions um, associate and that's really great for you know when you're old, kind of more mature in your career being a CISO, project manager or security analyst now that's not to say you shouldn't get that as someone that wants to go into engineering that's not at all what i'm saying if you can actually show how well well-rounded you are in terms of you know having that solutions associate and your developer associate that's gonna look amazing on a resume. But if you actually just wanna go down the first career path of solutions associate, what you can kind of expect is high level, you know, architecture solutions that you're gonna to have to know, you know, at a high level, what kind of resources are going into them, what's the cost of those resources and services when they're coupled together, and what kind of basic solutions and, you know, towards the end expert solutions you can create as a non-technical practitioner in the cloud. This is really, really useful again for CISOs, project managers, cyber analysts, things like that. And if you get this as a cyber analyst, you can really show a lot of prowess for wanting to actually move up the ladder and create solutions yourself. Now, the developer on the other side is gonna be much more of a granular look at the services and basic solutions themselves. So you're gonna to have to understand how to use APIs um, at a high level to pass this exam. You're gonna to want to know how services connect, what's the cost of those services, how you could optimize the cost to create a solution one way versus another. You're really gonna to want to understand these solutions and resources and services at a granular level. So if you're going that the, down that developer role, you can expect you know, people that are cloud engineers, um, cloud security engineers, and even uh, cloud analysts, you know, I really recommend that as an analyst, you really give both a shot. So, you know, you give the high level architecture solution part a shot, but you also give the developer part a shot as well. And these are two certifications that will really help you kind of get a feel for what you could be going into in your role. But also they're going to really look great on a resume where you're going to look like an extremely well-rounded professional when you go in for your first job and you're not only equipped with how to create these solutions at a high level, but you're also equipped with how to create them at a granular level and actually deploy them and action on them yourself. Now, finally, the last certification that I recommend you guys get, and I know I'm gonna catch a lot of flack for this one, is the Security Plus. Now, before you guys all freak out, that's not necessarily my choice, but I really think the Security Plus is a certification that you should get as a entry-level professional, so you kind of widen your horizons on who will hire you, whether it's public or private. A lot of public sector jobs are gonna want you to get a Security Plus or a Network Plus in order for you to be eligible for uh, some sort of clearance at any kind of level. And it really shows um, you know, how valid your security skills are at a baseline level. Now, I will say the exam itself is a bit outdated. It's talking about a lot of on-prem stuff that the cloud actually takes care of itself. But again, this certification is really to look good on the CV and, or your resume, wherever you're from. Um, and it really you know, opens your horizons who will hire you. Like government clients want this kind of certification. It shows validity to them. I'm not necessarily sure why, um, but again, I'm just trying to play within the parameters that I'm given. So if I'm giving you guys advice, I'm really gonna recommend that you guys look into the Security Plus. And again, I'll have links for that in the description below. This will kind of show you know, that you have not only the cloud side, but you have the basic security side as well. And you're, you know, a jack of all trades. You have the solutions architect associate where you're creating solutions at a high level. You have the developer associate where you're creating solutions at a granular level where you actually understand the solutions themselves and you're able to, you know, kind of explain them to someone else. And then you have the security plus where you're kind of seeing how everything works at a high level in terms of security, um, networking, um, and even just basic security, like insider threats, uh, monitoring, logging, just best practices on that end. A lot of, like I said, public sector companies are gonna want you to have something like this. And I really don't think it can hurt to kind of play the game a little bit and get a, a certification like this that's really not that hard to get if you put in the time to study. And again, I'll leave descriptions, or I'll leave links in the description below for you know, books, 
uh, websites, things like that that help me pass mine. So I really hope with this short little video that you guys took some extremely tangible steps that you can action on, you know, either today, tomorrow, start right now, right? Uh, that was kind of the goal of this video. I know a lot of the videos that I'm putting out right now are helping you guys understand at a high level, you know, what kind of the industry is like, what kind of specializations for roles you can go into. But I really want to start putting out videos like this where it shows you next steps, how to actually get into that role, how to make yourself a, applicable for uh, job openings that are popping up and you're really, you know, nervous because the ambiguity of the actual industry itself is, it just weighs on you. I totally get it. Um, a lot of the questions I will get are, you know, I just don't know where to start. So hopefully videos like this can actually help you guys understand where to start and give you guys, like I said, those next steps into getting into the actual industry. As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. Feel free to follow me on my socials in the description below. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and keep up to date with more content. And I will see you guys in the next video.